Okay. Okay, hopefully that did it. We should say an introduction so later we can edit the video. All right, so this is a France versus Austria match between Kaner and Brotherboard. I've called France. I've got Austria, which uh, is, uh, some people say, slightly favored in this matchup. So I'll, I'll just pile that on there to your pessimism, Kaner. Oh, I, mean, I expect to get my uh, proverbials handed to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm back. Hey there, Ambie. And okay. yeah, Ambie spectating this one. Yes. All right. So have we have we kind of started started or? Yes, I'm ready. I'm going to start entering orders now. We can begin. Yep. Oh, I've just hit ready. Okay. Did have we set things up? Like, did uh, you guys do that yes, already? Yes. No, we're doing it. Um, I'm, no, no, I'm no. Friends. I've been setting up the premise of what we're doing here. Oh, uh, we could maybe do a little bit of a better job of that if you would, uh, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Okay. So um, joining us today is the illustrious brother board, and um, this kind of follows on on a recent challenge that uh, Kana and myself had around um, you know, playing France versus Austria, who was a better player. And as a result of that, Kana um, has um, managed to secure himself a berth playing against against uh, brother board, who uh, is now going to hopefully school Kana. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> So um, it's uh, we're playing a game that's over on V Diplomacy. We'll uh, obviously put that in the show notes so you guys can come back and have a look later. Um, so this probably will take only about five minutes because um, you know, I think, as I've said, Kane is probably going to lose very, very quickly here. But not that I'm creating any expectations for you, Brother Board. Uh, the game's in your <laughs> hands, and um, it's also good to hear that you're going to be setting this out on your, on your YouTube channel as well. So a bit of a cross-promotion there. It's almost like Media Wars is still going on with you as a participant where we're trying to cross-promote each other. So... Um, Thanks very much for that, and um, yeah, over to you guys. Happy, happy, happy stabbing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and Amby, don't jump in and ask questions as to why things are happening the way they are. I'm, I've picked up sure. friends. Okay. Um, so if I if I hit ready, um, I'm just not as not as familiar with this interface. Does it does it alert me that you that the turns moved, or do I have to hit refresh? Uh, you'll have to hit refresh. Um, okay. Yep. There we go. It will alert you if you're the last player to enter ready. Um, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So, um, Brest to English Channel, Paris to Burgundy, and Marseille to Spain. That's very interesting. I have moved. Uh, my opening is Vienna to Tyrolia, Budapest to Trieste, and Albania, uh, Trieste to Albania. And this... Uh, the. This, these openings we made makes our next turn almost a foregone conclusion since there's not much uh, to choose from, which is pretty common for this variant. So what's turn. what's your thoughts on, on um, Kana's opening for, for that one, Brother Board? How would you have played that differently if you were France? Uh, is this a... I'm not sure what what exactly the tone I should take. You want me to take the tone of a of an educator, maybe? Like if we were, if I was trying to help you become really good at France versus Austria. I think that'd be great. Okay, so uh, I think that the there are two pretty good openings for France. One is to open to English Channel, Picardy, and Burgundy, and the other is to open to English Channel, Burgundy, and Piedmont. And uh, this is neither of those two openings. It's got a, a disadvantage compared to the other two, uh, which is that uh, since you're trying to pick up Spain or Portugal early, that is going to leave your army a little bit out of position. In my view, in France versus Austria, Portugal and Spain are centers that France can pick up pretty much at any time, and therefore they're not really a priority. You can go and get those during endgame. Whereas like with my moves, you can see I moved pretty much everything I could towards you that I possibly could uh, so I could pick up some centers while also moving my units into position. Does that make sense? I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Did it make sense to you, Kana? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So move on. On, on follow-up, uh, we'll make our next moves. Okay, I like this preview feature that lets me check to make sure I entered my orders correctly. Before we process. Yeah, that comes in very 
that comes in very handy if you've been drinking, believe me. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. <laughs> All right, so we each got two builds, which makes sense. That's what I would expect. Not a lot. Uh, you, you have, like, we have some interesting choices here where both of us could reasonably uh, build Mediterranean fleets. And whether either or both of us does that will have some effect on the trajectory of the map as to whether there's going to be an early contest in the Mediterranean or one of us is going to go for it or uh, we're just going to leave well enough alone. Cool. So you guys are putting your builds, I assume? Yes, I'm ready. I'm just having to think. Abby, do you want to read out what the orders, what the results? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so Kana moved English Channel to London, capturing that. He moved uh, Army Spain to Portugal, capturing that. And Burgundy attempted for Munich. It was bounced by Brotherboard moving Tyrolia to Munich. Um, Trieste moved to Venice. By the way, Brotherboard, it's interesting that you call it Trieste. Um, maybe we're doing it wrong. Um, and Albania moved to Greece. So uh, two so builds for Brotherboard, two builds for Kana. Fun fact, that town can be pronounced both Trieste and Trieste, depending oh. on whether you are pronouncing it in German or Italian. Oh, okay, yeah, of course, because yeah, because of where it is, it would have historically probably been more ethnically, oh, sorry, German-speaking town, like uh, a fair little bit of the north of Italy. Okay, so... Oh, yeah. The oh, just ready. up your mind. Yep. Okay. So you'll have to refresh. Ooh. Just click the global to refresh so, it. Okay, so we have a... Give me one second. I'm getting a, a technical issue. Okay. So I might I might just read the um, the bills. So we have a uh, Army Paris, Army Marseille, Army Vienna, Army Budapest. Heavy duty clicking going on in the background. Oh, that'll be me. Sorry. No, 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 it's all right. <laughs> it's a bit of color. Okay. So we've got a land war ahead of us. Neither of us decided to put a fleet out this turn. I guess what that means is that you are the only player with the fleet in the um, the Mediterranean region, which is probably a strategic advantage. It's good for buying time. That um, as as Austria, it's um, it's not really that great to build a large number of fleets in this variant because the biggest possible payoff most of the time is that you're going to be able to put Tunis behind a stalemate line, maybe, and you only mm -hmm. really need uh, three fleets to do that. So if you can delay building fleets or like guess correctly that a fleet isn't necessary, that can help you out. So I'm I'm feeling good. Okay, hi. I, I declined to build a fleet, and that's not a huge opportunity cost for me because my fleet in Greece is going to be able to go pick up Tunis without having to worry about what's going to happen next. Cool. So have you guys put in your spring 902 moves? I'm, I'm putting them in right now. I'm, I'm giving them okay, a moment's cool. thought. Okay, I put in my orders. Oh, yeah. Global refresh. Uh, Portugal, Ooh, okay. to Spain, London, <laughs> to Italy, um, Burgundy to Ruhr, Paris, to Burgundy, Marseille bounces in Piedmont. And for my part, I got Tyroli into Munich successfully, but you probably anticipated that and uh, bounced uh, Marseille and Piedmont with Venice. I moved Greece to Ionian Sea, and further out into the Mediterranean, and uh, perhaps this is counterintuitive, but I moved Vienna and Budapest to Galicia and Romania. And it may seem counterintuitive because it might seem like I am moving them away from the relevant front. But the reason why I'm doing this is so that you 
cannot necessarily use your fleet in North Sea to fight me for Germany. You're going to have to make a choice between fighting for Germany and contesting St. Petersburg down the road. Mm, very clever. Did you, um, Brother Ward, did you kind of expect a, just a straight-out bounce again in Munich, or did you half anticipate? It, it, for me, I think moving Tyrolia to Munich is the right move, regardless of what I anticipate France doing here. If France moved to Munich, then the bounce is the right move, and if France moved to Burgundy and Ruhr, then moving to Munich is still the right move. Yeah, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, once you get kicked out of Munich anyway, you can still retreat to Kiel or Berlin, so you're still exactly. going to pick up something, and yeah. Okay, so um, four moves, guys. All right. I've entered my orders. So uh, in, in France versus Austria, I generally say that there are four critical centers that the match is going to come down to. Tunis, Munich, Berlin, and St. Petersburg. And if France is going to win, France will have to conquer all four. Otherwise, there may be a draw. If Austria is going to win, Austria needs to hold on to two of the four long enough to reach 18 and solo win. See, all of that's just too complex for me, mate. Like, I'm just moving <laughs> pieces around the board. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all I've, right. Hit, I've hit ready, so here we go. Okay, the match is still developing quite interestingly. We each made three captures, so we're each going to get three builds. My builds, I'll just tell you right now, it's because it's so obvious. I'm going to build a two armies and a fleet. <laughs> Can I just first um, outline the, the move? So um, yeah, yeah. Brotherboard moved um, Fleet Iron Sea to Tunis, uh, Army Venice to Piedmont. Um, Army Munich attempted to go to Kiel but was bounced by Ruhr. Galicia went to Warsaw, uh, Romania went to Sev. So, um, yes, yeah, so we've got a number of builds happening there. And for Cana, we had um, Army Spain held. Um, as I said before, Army Ruhr attempted to go to Kiel, but that was a bounce. Burgundy went to Belgium and Marseille went to Burgundy and North Sea Fleet went into Denmark. And builds. So Brother Ward has technically four builds, but obviously can only build three. So three builds each. Uh, I have to hit ready, Brother. Oh, shoot. I thought I did. Okay. I think uh, that's I've the right move two... here to build the two fleets. Yeah. Uh, two fleets and an army for Kana. And two armies and a fleet for Brother Ward. So what I'm hoping to do strategically as Austria is contest these four centers of Tunis, Munich, Berlin, and St. Petersburg enough so that I'm able to mop up all the other centers on my side of the board uh, faster than I can be knocked out of them by France. Okay, yep. So what I'm thinking about as Austria here is how can I, uh, I, I want to spread around my units and try to capture these in, inland centers like, and like around the Balkans and Anatolia fast enough that I'm able to win the game before France's inevitability turns the tide. But I also don't want to allocate so few units to actually fighting that I get kicked out of those centers uh, faster than I want to. 
So the game for Austria, in my mind, is about being judicious about allocating precisely the number of units you need to each area of the board and no more. Because if you allocate too many, uh, that may be how you lose. Okay, so you guys are still tapping away, I can hear. I'm ready. Uh, I'm just doing my preview. Fresh. Okay, do you want me to read? Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll start with Kana this time. So uh, Fleet Denmark uh, attempted to go to Kiel and was bounced. Army Belgium moved to Holland. Uh, Army Burgundy moved to Munich with Ruhr support. Army Paris moved to Burgundy. Fleet Brest moved to MAO. Uh, Army Spain Went to, attempted to go to Marseille but was bounced by Piedmont. Um, Fleet Marseille left and moved into the Gulf of Lyon. Uh, so over on the brotherboard side of the, the equation, uh, Fleet Tunis moved into the Western Med. We said before, Army Piedmont bounced in Marseille. Um, Army Munich tried to go to Kiel but was bounced. Army Vienna moved to Bohemia. Army Warsaw to Prussia. Fleet Trieste to Adriatic, um, Army Budapest to Romania, Army Sev through to Moscow. And so I'm going to enter my retreat order and I'm going to retreat Munich to Berlin. Okay. So we go into full 1903. I guess from my perspective looking at this, I can see automatically that. Oh, okay, here's, here's my calls. I, I do think Brother Board's going to win this, no surprises, uh, only because he's really kind of pushed things right up to Kana whilst at the same time has all of these supply centres in his back pocket he can kind of cash in later. So you've still got Rome, Naples, Serbia, Bulgaria. You're just picking up Romania and Moscow now. You've still got Con, Ankara, Smyrna to go. Um, and, of course, St. P is probably for your grabs as well. Well, Kane has only really got um, Norway, Sweden, Edinburgh and Liverpool to kind of cash in. So to me, it looks like you're definitely going to get to the 18 before him and brother board. Does that sound fair? It's, it's not a, a foregone conclusion. There's still a certain amount of guessing left in the game since, uh, well, the way I see it is that Kaner has is concentrating really hard on getting control of all the German centers. And it seems likely that he'll be able to do so given that he's allocated something like five units to this and I've only allocated three. But uh, St. Petersburg's wide open for me, which means that I, I have at least one of the two centers I think I'm going to need to win. And I even have the possibility of annoyingly going over into Norway. And I thought the same thing, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, I do have some ability to still contest the Mediterranean for a while since it's just two fleets versus two fleets, and I and I already have Tunis, so we could go back and forth for a little bit. So uh, if, I keep the, if I keep momentum on my side, I could maybe win with St. Petersburg and Tunis or perhaps St. Petersburg and Norway as my 18 centers. And I'm, I'm going to fight for Germany, not because I think I'm going to keep it in the long run, but just to uh, buy as much time as possible. Cool. So, um, I'm kind of guessing you guys haven't actually put any orders in yet for fall. I'm, I'm still thinking about mine after I okay. said all that. <laughs> I thought you would. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. I'm ready. Okay, I 
readied my orders now. Oh, I don't know. I should have hit ready. <laughs> okay, let's refresh. There we go. Okay. Um, do you guys want me to read it, or you want to read your own moves now? I'll read, I'll read my moves here. So uh, the way I thought out my turn was I moved Moscow to St. Petersburg and Romania to Bulgaria as no-brainers. That unit in St. Petersburg is there to try to contest centers I need to win, and the unit in Bulgaria is trying to mop up distant centers as fast as possible. I moved Adriatic Sea to Ionian Sea to get it into position. There's really no other way to do that. And I moved Western Mediterranean to Tyrrhenian Sea, guessing correctly that Gulf of Lyon would be moving there as well, and I would should try to block it. Uh, I moved Piedmont to Marseille just to be annoying, and uh, I don't think I accomplished anything, but there's not a lot else I want to do with that unit. And I made a supported attack on Munich from Berlin, supported by Bohemia, and backfilled Berlin with Prussia. The goal here being just to waste as much time as I can in the center of the board, and uh, I think that covers all my movements. Excellent. And Kana, how about you? Oh. You've got some bit uh, of interesting uh, action. Denmark supported Holland to Kiel. Um, Ruhr moved to Munich. Munich moved to Tyrolia uh, to get a unit, hopefully behind brothers' lines. I'm not sure that's going to work very well with all these builds. Uh, Burgundy to Marseille, Spain to Marseille to bounce from P the Piedmont move. Um, Goffley on Tyrrhenian Sea. Um, I probably should have second guessed brother there and moved to the Western Mediterranean. Oh, well. And MAO to North Africa to put pressure on Tunis. Mm. Kana fights back. The, Any surprises there, Brother Board? I, I am surprised and delighted to see Munich move to Tyrolia. And I don't mean that in the sarcastic a sense of I think it's a bad move. I think it's an interesting move. And uh, it shows that my opponent is thinking about position and how to really like try to mess me up uh, as austria i'm less anxious about my line being broken because i'm just trying to reach 18 and win as fast as possible uh it's possible to even like lose some of my home centers honestly and still win as austria uh that same is not true for france in this variant so it's a price i'm willing to pay but i do think it is an interesting move hmm yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I was surprised by it, but it's a good, it's a good move. It's a good move. Well done, Kana. Uh, okay. I don't think it's going to pay off. Perfectly honest. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got we've got the builds in. So um, no surprises for uh, Brother Board. He's got three armies. So I think that was probably the the right call. Um, and Kana's only got one build, which was um, a fleet and breast. What's your take on it, Ambi? Where are we sitting? Um, it's there's more opportunity for you now, I think, than before, particularly with the other fleet build. But I'm guessing, I'm trying to work out: Are you going to be using that fleet and breast to kind of start trying to get some supremacy in the in the med, or are you going to use that to? try to start mopping up some of the other centres behind your line. So, the Tyrolia thing is... I can see a way that you can use it, but it's going to be tricky. With France, I, in my opinion, it's not as important to make captures and get builds as long as you get at least one every so often, like one per turn. And it's also not as important to mop up your back centers because if France gets a hold of centers like Tunis, Munich, Berlin, and St. Petersburg, Austria usually can't get them back. And then France just inevitably wins once that happens. 
but but I guess at the same time we've got a dynamic here where you're a good two units ahead of Kana and you've still got to build in your pocket. So it, I can kind of see that momentum continuing for a while. So you're currently on 12 supply centres, but I can just kind of count if we go Serbia 13, Romania 14, Con 15, Ankara 6... I can't count. 16? <laughs> Smyrna 17, Moscow 18, Norway 19. So... And then we still even talked about um, Rome and Naples, so... I just sorry, I, I still it, can't see him coming back. Oh, it's true. I have a pretty significant uh, advantage in momentum here, because my, my even though, for example, it would be pretty straightforward. I've, I readied my orders, by the way. Even though it'd be pretty straightforward for France to eventually knock an Austrian army out of Scandinavia, it takes many units to do so, and there's probably just not enough time left in the match. Yep. Okay, so let's see if the order's gone through. Let's see how that went. Okay. So. Uh, um, my retreat order is mandatory. We should, oh, we should say retreat. what happened. We should, yeah, we should say what happened. So, um, Canada, do you want to read yours first? Uh, yeah, sure. Denmark supports Kiel. Kiel's and Ruhr supports Burgundy to Munich, success. Uh, Brest to Mid-Atlantic Ocean, Spain to Marseille, Gulf Leon to Western Med, North Africa to Tunis, bounce. Uh, Tyrolia moves to Bohemia, um, dislodge myself because of Brother Board's move. And so uh, I moved St. Petersburg to Norway like I've been talking about. And uh, that worked. I had I supported Munich to Kiel with Berlin uh, in the off chance that that somehow mattered. It did not. Uh, Munich was failed and then dislodged and is going to have to retreat to Silesia. I self-bounced Piedmont and Trieste off of each other in Venice and then supported Vienna to Tyrolia with Bohemia, anticipating correctly that Tyrolia would have no retreat option after this and be forced disbanded which is the, that was, it, it took a lot. I had to use four units to make that happen, uh, but I did get rid of that dang thing. And I moved Budapest to Serbia and Bulgaria to Constantinople to try to mop up some more of these distant centers. In the Mediterranean, Ionian Sea bounced North Africa at Tunis, and I moved uh, Western Mediterranean to Tyrrhenian Sea in retreat. That succeeded, that wasn't a retreat order, but I'm, I'm backing up from the line. That succeeded. Uh, I'm feeling... Uh, you know, that I'm eventually going to lose uh, Tunis to France here, but it may not be uh, fast enough to matter. I, I can see one move that's likely to occur this term, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to, you know, <laughs> jinx get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. jinx it. I, yeah, I get that. So... I think the retreats are already in, aren't they? Yep. Yes. So the retreats in. So you guys now can progress on through to fall nineteen hundred and four. about that army in Piedmont is it pretty much blocks Marseille from being an active build centre. I find that happens quite often. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah. So I really, I see the value in taking Piedmont early as France um, to just to keep that as an optional build. Then you've got the challenge, though, of being able to continue to hold Piedmont because the only way you can do so then is basically by filling Marseille with a, a unit that you can't move because it's support holding Piedmont. Well, the thing is, you know, if it's dislodged in Piedmont, you can always retreat forward into Tuscan and say, or, you know, you've got options yeah. there. Sure. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Okay. Oh, I should preview my orders. Ooh, that was risky. I haven't readied uh, mine yet since I still got to save them and do a preview. 
That's fine. The game state is complicated enough that it can take a moment just to enter in the orders even when you know what they're supposed to be. well yeah so the move i thought that would happen has happened which was the uh, the bounce in sweden um <laughs> and the bounce in tunis i read it out Andy. yeah okay so you want me to do it okay so um uh Kana moved or attempted to move denmark to sweden bounce uh munich moved to berlin with kiel support success Ruhr attempted to move to Munich, that failed. Uh, Marseille tried to go to Piedmont, fail. MAO went to North Atlantic, success. Uh, North Africa to Tunis with uh, Western Med support, fail due to a bounce. Um, Court, of course, now we go over to Austria. Um, by Ionian to Tunis with Tyrrhenian Sea support, uh, so that's where the bounce came from. Piedmont tried to go to Marseille, bounce. Trieste moved to Venice, success. Um, Bohemia moved to Munich with Cilicia and Tyrolia support. That was success. Serbia held. Con moved to Ankara. And as I said before, Norway tried to go to Sweden. And that was a bounce. All right. I'm going to enter my retreat orders and retreat Berlin to Prussia, which is mandatory here. And now we go to the builds. So as we enter the build phase, we now have um, 14 supply centres for Brotherboard, 10 supply centres for Kana. Um, Brotherboard's got three builds in his pocket and Kana's got two builds. Um, that being said, Kana's only got two centres that are open whilst uh, Brotherboard's got all three. Might build an army in Paris. Uh, just tossing up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you think it's too early? It's it's not looking too good. I reckon you should still build the fleet. <laughs> no, if brother's got this one. I reckon he needs what four to win. So we had builds. Romania, uh, Constantinople, Smyrna, from Rome and Naples, all in his pocket. So yeah. So yeah. builds were builds were Army Paris, Fleet Brest, uh, Army Vienna, Army Budapest, Fleet Trieste. And he's locking up the Italian Peninsula. So, so with 14 supply centres and one, two, three, four behind his line, six if you include Rome and Naples. That's right. This this is, uh, if you were playing against one of those artificial intelligences that rates your chances of winning, I'd be saying, okay, you got like a 0.1% chance of winning at this point. Yeah, I think the only way I'm going to win at this point is if you stuff up somehow with your orders. Yeah, that's always possible. <laughs> that's that is true. Uh, I uh, when I play uh, online diplomacy, uh, I always force my opponents to go through the trouble of setting up the stalemate line if I'm trying to win, because once in a while they just uh, blow it and I win. <laughs> Okay, so um, spring 1905. So just from the Mediterranean situation, just that alone, I know that I probably can't lose anymore because I have the three fleets that are needed to lock up Tunis behind a stalemate line. I can convoy an army to Tunis using Tyrrhenian Sea and sent that third fleet uh, eventually into Naples to hold Tyrrhenian Sea and then 
once I have that position, it's, it's, it'll be a stalemate line. Well, not even that. You can get to the win without even having to keep bouncing me there and still get the win. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I just uh, for the for the benefit of someone who's trying to to learn the variant. Oh yep. So my guess is that this will be over full nine hundred and five. I can't see Brotherboard's a good enough play to be able to work out how to pick up Moscow, Romania, Con, Smyrna, Rome, and Naples while still losing Tunis. But maybe he just wants to string you out, Kana, and make you squirm. <laughs> oh, I'm not that mean. <laughs> no, 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 you're not, not. You're not like that at all. I can't hold Berlin. And so, what I have been trying to do in the German area is just go around and around, trading and fighting, not specifically trying to capture any center and hold on to it, but just to stop you from having them all. save my orders as well okay refresh Kidaki. do you guys want to read your own okay sure so I, I moved Norway to Sweden once again uh, triggering a bounce and I positioned my eastern units from Budapest into Romania Serbia to Bulgaria and Ankara to Smyrna with the goal of mopping up Romania, Constantinople, and Smyrna at the end of this turn. I moved Ionian Sea to Tunis, supported by Trinian Sea, and that succeeded. I moved Venice to Rome, that worked, and Trieste left port and is in Adriatic. Piedmont moved to Marseille again, accomplishing nothing, but just in case. And I made a supported attack on Berlin, uh, moving Munich, supported by Silesia and Prussia, and that attack failed because it was countered uh, by a move from Berlin to Munich with two supports. Very clever. I was expecting you there to support you, Silesia, to take Berlin or maybe Prussia. Yeah, anyway, it was a long shot and paid off on that, but it's not going to matter in the long run. Um, North Atlantic Ocean to Norwegian Sea, Brest to English Channel, Paris to Burgundy, supported by Marseille. Western Med to Gulf of Leon, North Africa to Western Med, um, Ruhr and Kiel supports Berlin to Munich bounce, Denmark to Sweden bounce. So I think at this point it's a checkmate because I can just capture a bunch of centers and without you being able to take one from me. Um, yeah, you've got four in your pocket. Um, unless I can take a supply centre from you this season, um, which mm. is not possible. I, I did half expect Brother Board you to move or pull Prussia back to um, Livonia or Warsaw so that you'd also get Moscow. Uh, that m might have been a reasonable move here and I just wasn't thinking about it. But I think at the end of the day, the math will get you to 18 anyway. That would have just got you to a, a, a glorious 19. <laughs> okay. I've entered my order. Because I can make five captures without losing anything.
Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, you're right. You can get to, so that'll get you to 19. Which well, is you you could have gone for a, a um a very self indulgent 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, capturing a bunch of centers at the end like that is in my experience pretty common for an Austrian win, where Austria may have tenuously held on to various positions that would require France two moves to take. So Austria suddenly abandons those positions, makes a bunch of captures, and wins the game before France would be able to roll Austria out. One way that I think about the France versus Austria matchup is that Austria starts off the match with tempo, and France has this inevitability because the positions that Austria needs to win are very difficult for Austria to fortify behind a stalemate line are actually impossible. And so uh, what the French player needs to do to win is create situations where the Austrian player has to make guesses about where to allocate units. Like, oh, do I need to put them in the Mediterranean or do I need to put it in the north? I'm not sure. Create those guesses so that the Austrian player has the opportunity to guess wrong. And if the Austrian player guesses wrong enough times and maybe you make some good, clever plays here and there, then you will win as France. But the, the beginning of the match is in Austria's favor and you have to turn that tide somehow to win as France. So do you prefer playing as Austria? Or do you um, prefer France as a challenge? I, I prefer France not so much as the challenge, but because the play style of trying to play for inevitability uh, really suits me, I think. Um, to, to put it another way, uh, playing as Austria in this matchup often involves flinging your units uh, wherever you can, sometimes even um, sacrificing your line to do so. And that's the right way to play, but it somehow it just never feels right. <laughs> it just never feels right to me. I like having a nice fortified line. And when you play as France, you definitely need to do that. If Austria gets even one unit behind your line, it's over. And I like playing that way. You know, just uh, keep it you know, safe and simple and secure and uh, create opportunities for my opponent to make mistakes that I then exploit. That's, that's my preferred way to play, I think. And you've won. All right. So, final moves. Um, Norway to Norway, uh, Norwegian Sea to Norway, English Channel to North Sea, Denmark hold. I was hoping you are going to go for Sweden, but, um, yeah, too clever there. Um, <laughs> Kiel and Ruhr supports Berlin to Munich bounce, Burgundy to Marseille, Marseille to Tuscany, convoyed by Golf of Lyon, Western Med to Tyrrhenian Sea. And so for my part, I made exactly the moves needed to capture the centers and no more. So I moved Tyrrhenian Sea to Naples, Bulgaria to Constantinople, and support held Munich with three pieces in Tyrolia, Bohemia, and Silesia. Uh, I think everything else held because it didn't need to go anywhere. Didn't need to. Yep. Ugh. Oh, good one. Virtual handshake, brother. Woo! Well, we did it. What a around. What a fun thing to try. It's like I said, I'm pretty shit at this game, but not this variant anyway. Um, well, you're, bad, you're good enough to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm really glad that, that we tried uh, creating some content in this format since the 1v1 variant is the one of the few variants that you could actually just play in, a, in, in one recording and get from beginning to end. So it's got that going for it. Oh, you're absolutely right. We could probably do a three a three player variant pretty quick. I would imagine um, there's a few of those sitting around on um, B. Oh, that's always delightful. quite like. Yeah, hundred. I think hundred's always a good one. Hundred. Yep. Hang on, just let me. Um, I'm just going to pull up what three versus three variants are actually uh, out there are available. Um, so looking at the, just. Just for everybody's knowledge, um, I mean, the outcome obviously was a was a bit of a expected. Um, there were still a number. Surprisingly, I guess when you've got a situation where someone has has soloed the board on nineteen, there were still four supply centres neutrals that were still there available. So um, that's I was surprised to see that. Looking at the stats, also obviously this particular variant uh, has been played. 
copious amounts over on, on V-diplomacy where we're, where we're looking at right now. Um, there's been over um, two and a half thousand games played with a, a solo win. And um, there is definitely a, a measure, I suppose, of, of, of Austria winning more often than, than France. So Austria has won a total of 1,485 times and France has only won 1,030 times. Um, strange enough, there's 150 draws. So some some tournaments, um, if you play a France versus Austria tournament, they'll have a rule that uh, gives the draw uh, a, a slight edge to the player who got France, so that if the French player is able to fight Austria to a draw, that sort of almost counts as a win. And then if there's a need for a tiebreaker. Okay, so there's. Four variants to choose from that are three players. Um, there's 100, which is a variant set and based around the 100 years war. So you play, um, what are we, Burgundy, England and France. Um, there's classic, where it's Italy versus England versus Russia. There's a classic where it's France versus Germany versus Austria. There's... Treaty of Verdun, which is set uh, in the Carolingian Empire, which has been split just after, what's his face, Charlemagne's death, split into three kingdoms. Uh, the three kingdoms are... Uh, what's the name of this variant again? West Francia, East Francia, and the Holy Roman Empire. Um, that's 1843 Treaty of Verdun. I can send you links. Oh, I'm, I'm trying uh, to follow along on my, uh, on my screen. And 1843 Treaty of Verdun. Oh, no, no, no. It's 843. It. 843. It's 843. 843. Oh, actually, I've, I've played this, tr this Treaty of Verdun one. When you look at the stats for this, this is incredibly balanced. The, um, the statistics basically, uh, almost overwhelmingly a three-way split. Let me look at it. Oh, so, look, you, with it, there's been 300, <laughs> 367 games, and we've got a, um, the East Franks here, one on 117, middle 122, oh. west 128. That's pretty close. That's that's intriguing. That's and we cool. have 1066, um, a three-player um, variant, which probably would wouldn't work if we're doing a live recording because it's got fog of war. Um, but this one simulates um, the Norman invasion, um, well, 1066 and all that, uh, created by yours, his truly, who's uh, over there. <laughs> Only in his third version. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think... Uh, my okay, so here's here's my view. I wouldn't worry about 1066 because it's it's it hasn't been as balanced um, as I would have hoped in creating it. And that's probably why we had three versions, and there really probably needs to be a fourth version to try to rebalance it again. But um, too difficult to do. Um, yeah, I mean, my 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 preference probably would be Treaty of Verdun, but I think you'd also do hundred. Or we can try something which is, you know, still based on the classic map. I'm pretty, pretty cool with any of those. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm open to any of those. I, uh, how can I put this? I haven't played any of those variants, so uh, they all seem equally interesting to me. And uh, I don't, I don't come in with uh, my, my history of having played it a bunch. That uh, that does come in when we when we play something like France versus Austria. So maybe we'll be on a more equal footing when we play. Well, let's um, let's arrange for a game of Treaty of Verdun um, at some point. I know today is a pretty busy day for us over in Australia. Um, otherwise, I'd suggest we do it now. But um, yeah, there's a uh, well, it's Mother's Day today um, in Australia. So um, I know Andy's got stuff he's uh, got organized he needs to nip off to um yep i gotta go pick up the mother-in-law in 30 minutes uh, yeah. all right well, I'm, I'm sure we'll get a chance to play sooner or later I, I think we're pretty good about uh keeping our promises to to show up and hang out uh digitally when we can 
and um, and thank you very much, Brother Bob, for the original suggestion for uh, Kana and I to play each other on that variant. So uh, obviously that then created the impetus to then have Kana play against you. So um, thank you very much for the inspiration. Oh, you're welcome. And um, thank you, thank you very much for joining us today, and and particularly for you know, the school. Giving... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, educating Kana, educating. Kana. <laughs> Until we meet again. Absolutely. Thanks, Brother Bullet. See ya. Thanks, mate.